What's up guys, I'm Trey Wilborn and welcome to this week's not so super short Bible story. In today's lesson, we are in Matthew chapter 26 and we're talking about when Jesus was betrayed by the disciples. But I wanna share with you first a quick story. When I was younger, I had a best friend. We went everywhere together. His name was Tyler. And so Tyler and I, we would ride our bikes to the park and uh, we had classes together at school and literally we would do everything together. He, I would go to his house, he would come to my house. We were best friends. That is until one day this happened. a drink on my Xbox and it was totally ruined. It wouldn't turn on anymore. And I was so upset with Tyler. I was like, what have you done? Now I'll never be able to play Xbox again. And so from that point, Tyler and I were not as close as we were. In fact, we kind of separated ourselves from one another and it was this really terrible deal. But that kind of reminds me a little bit about what happened in Matthew chapter 26 when the disciples were separated from Jesus. They had disowned Jesus on two separate occasions. So let me tell you about it. Uh, the, the time was Passover, which was a time of celebration. Uh, in fact, the Jewish people were celebrating that God had delivered them out of Egypt. And so there was this celebration known as Passover that was happening. And so they were eating a meal and Jesus was uh, at what's called the Last Supper. And that's the last meal where all the disciples are together in one place. And so they were eating their meal together and then Jesus had explained to them that someone was going to betray Jesus. And so they went around the table and they were like, Lord, it couldn't be me, right? And one by one, they, they asked, Jesus, Lord, it's not me who would betray you. It couldn't be. And so finally, in, in verse 22, uh, Jesus says this, the one who has dipped his hand into this bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as, as it is written about him. But woe to the man that be betrays Jesus. It would be better for him to have not have been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him said, surely it's not me. Then Jesus answered, you have said so. And so at that point, Jesus announced that it would be Judas that would betray Jesus. And how in the world could that possibly happen? They went everywhere together. They were best friends with one another. The disciples were a close knit family and yet, when the pressure was on, in, for, in the case of Judas, the love of the money was enough to betray Jesus. So they had finished the meal, and in that same chapter, just a few sentences down, right after they took communion, there was another disciple that was going to uh, disown Jesus. This disciple was gonna deny Jesus, uh, he was going to pretend like he had never met Jesus. He didn't know who that Jesus guy was. And, and that, was, that was Peter. And so what happened was, uh, like we had learned last week, Jesus was very popular with some, but the religious leaders wanted Jesus dead. And so what that, what that did was a lot of people became scared because they thought, if I know Jesus, then I'll be a target. So they came to Peter and they said, aren't you that guy who walked with Jesus? Aren't you that guy who was with him day after day? And, and Peter said, no, I must have been somebody else who kind of maybe looked like me, but it definitely wasn't me. But you know, the thing about this, this passage is that Peter didn't deny Jesus just one time. But Peter denied Jesus three times. So, what are we learning in, in today's lesson? Yes, th this is a hard, hard lesson because we see that Judas betrayed Jesus, Peter denied Jesus. And what's the takeaway? 
Well, we read that 2,000 years ago, it wasn't easy being a Christian. And, and in today's world, it's also not easy to be a Christian. I see in, in, in the media, I see in, in, in school and in, in today's culture, it can be hard to be a Christian. It's becoming increasingly unpopular to be a Christian. And I just wanna challenge you guys to stand up for what we believe in. To be honest, the story of Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ, uh, we need to celebrate. We need to remember the things that Christ has done for us and not hide them in a box. Or when someone asks us, we say, well, I'm kind of a Christian. I've heard that. I, I may have went to Sunday school when I was younger, but you know, that in a way is kind of denying Christ. And so my challenge to you guys is to be strong and courageous. Stand up for what you believe in and celebrate Jesus Christ. And if you ever get put into a tight spot where admitting that you're a Christian or talking to someone about your faith is uncomfortable, ask God to be there for you in that situation and ask him to give you the right words because he will. I love you guys. I can't wait to see you at church real, real soon. But until then, check out this really awesome video coming up next. Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Long ago, God delivered his people from slavery in Egypt. He sent 10 plagues to Egypt. And during the 10th plague, the firstborn of the Egyptians died. The Israelites smeared the blood of a lamb on their doorpost and God kept them safe. He passed over their houses. God said that once a year, the Israelites should celebrate the Passover to remember how he rescued them. He told his people when and how to celebrate. On the day when the Jewish people were supposed to kill the Passover lamb, Jesus sent Peter and John to get the meal ready. He said, go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him. Jesus said that the man would go to a house and the homeowner would show Peter and John a large room upstairs with furniture in it. That was the place Jesus wanted them to get the Passover meal ready. So Peter and John did as Jesus said. When the Passover meal was ready, Jesus and his disciples reclined to eat. Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were upset, but Jesus knew this was part of God's plan. Peter said he would never betray Jesus, but Jesus said Peter would deny him three times. Then Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God for it, broke it, and then gave it to his disciples to eat. Jesus said, this is my body, which I am giving for you. Do this to remember me. Jesus took the cup and gave it to his disciples. They drank from it. And Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. They sang a hymn together, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus knew he would be arrested and would suffer. Then he would die on the cross to take the punishment for the sins of the world. On the third day, Jesus would rise from the dead. The New Covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus' death and resurrection will be forgiven of his sins and will have eternal life.